Welcome to June's Leak Code Challenge. Today's problem is power of 2. Given an integer, write a function to determine if it is a power of 2. We're given a number and we want to figure out if that number can be the result of 2 to the power of some integer. Say we're given number 1, 2 to the power of 0 equals 1, so we'll return true. Say we're given 16, 2 to the power of 4 equals 16, so we'll return true. If we're given 218 though, there is no 2 to the power of some integer that will ever equal 218, so we'll return false. It's a straightforward problem. We could do this iteratively, just check each number from, uh, from 1 and increment to the power of 2 to the 1, 2 to 2, 2 to 3, and just continue on until uh, we can find that this number given to us equals that number. And we'll do it in a while loop as long as that number that we're calculating is less than or equal to the number given to us. And if it's not, if we have in, um, gone over that number, we can just break the loop and return a false. So all we'll do is initialize two variables. First, have a check and something called, I guess, incrementer i. And we'll just make that both 1. And the reason for that is 1 is going to be the lowest possible number, right? Because 2 to the power of 0 equals 1. There isn't anything lower than that. You could think, oh, what about negative numbers? But those would then be fractions. And numbers given to us are all integers, so it's not possible. So while our check number is less than or equal to the num given to us, we'll check, hey, is this number equal to n? Because if it is, then there is a 2 to the power of some integer that exists for this number, so we can turn true. Otherwise, let's recalculate our check number to equal 2 to the power of i, and we'll increment our i, like that. Finally, if we break this loop and we're able to get out, then that means no number existed, so we'll return a false. And let me make sure that looks good. We can just submit that. And there it does get accepted. So this was a straightforward approach. Uh, you know, slight variations exist and you can make that better, but there is one other way you could solve this and you could use bit operators. It's a little bit confusing, but say that if it was a power of two, that would mean there's only one, one inside of the bit representation. So say that we had the number four, it would look like this, right? And in the same way, number eight would look like that. Um, 16 would look like, like this. And there's only going to be one, one. So we could say, Hey, if it's going to be a po power of 2, just check to see if only 1, 1 exists on all the bit, uh, on the bits of this number, the bit representation. Um, and the way that you could calculate that is to just subtract 1 from this number. Say that we had the number 4, like this, and we subtract uh, 1 from it. That would mean this 1 disappears, and it would look something like this. It would look like 0, 1, 1. And we can just do an AND operator and say, hey, if this was an exponent of 2 and we did an n operator with minus 1, everything should always equal 0. It should always be 0 here. Uh, there's no possible way for um, a number with 1, 1 operator with the end, uh, I'm sorry, 1 bit operate, 1 bit representation with an n operator of minus 1 to equal anything but 0. And how would you ever know that? Honestly, you would just kind of have to memorize it. It's just one of those little things that you might want to know. So if you do know that, that that's um, good for you. We could, all we have to do is say, all right, man, just check to see if, see if we can check two is the n is going to be the n operator of n minus one. Now, if this equals zero, then it's true. Like, if n and operator n minus 1 equals 0, then that means this was the power of 2. So we can just actually return this, and that should work. And I believe that might be the fastest solution. Um, but it's one of those obscure ones. Oh, OK. So one thing we might have to remember is what about if it's given a 0? If n is less than or equal to 0, then we return false, of course. Uh, and then let's check that. There, that's accepted. So this probably is the fastest, but it's also the most obscure. Bitwise operators are always tricky, uh, but it's a nice little bit of knowledge to have in case you ever see this problem. So thank you.